Amen. You may be seated. Just a few announcements that we have. Who's the missionary, missionary of the month? To where? Amen. That's like that's like an easy one. I struggled with the um, um, DDPI. Yeah, that was that was that was rough. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Mother's Day banquet May six. Canaan Baptist at eleven a.m. We have a lot of ladies going. I think we're in the 15, 16 plus mark. That's a blessing. That's awesome. Miss Sue and Tammy, I believe, want to go. They've been visiting uh, lately, and um, that, that that's encouraging. Amen. <clears throat> um, so that's, um, don't forget, there's going to be a prize for the best dressed cowgirl. Um, and if you have any questions, see Miss Kathy or Miss Rachel. Uh, they got some great plans. There's uh, Famous Dave's is catering it in. You know, I've been announcing this, and, like, it makes me want Famous Dave's now. Uh, I went with Jimmy last time I went, like, a year or two ago, and, like, <laughs> that is, you can't just go for 12 bucks and get a meal anymore. It's, like, 18 bucks across the board. So uh, that is why we haven't gone and peed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, so ladies are going to eat good, and I hope that they don't eat too much and they bring some leftovers home. That will be May 6th, don't forget, and it's at Cane and Baptist from Taylor. If you need a ride, let us know. Amen. Church work day, April 29th. If you can make it, it'll be 10 o'clock. Lunch will be provided. Amen. Uh, it'll be kind of fun to, you know, what are we going to do this year? You know, we're not doing some major project in the springtime. Amen. That'll be, we actually just like clean the church and <laughs> dust the lights and amen. Um, and then, and I'll say this too, check out our new website. Um, it is almost 100% uh, tweaked. There's still a few things to do, but it is different. It is different. It's it's what we've been wanting to do for two years. We were happy with our website before, um, and we got it up and running. We just had to do a couple more things to finish it. We were like 93%, but the, the I don't know what you call it, the, the host guy, the guy that, was, that, that makes all the official changes, literally became deathly ill in the hospital for like a couple of years. And, uh, you know, it's just what it is. We were kind of stuck with it. Um, but... Um, uh, we're not thrilled with his, um, um, even once he's been better, we're not thrilled with his uh, um, attentiveness to what we've been asking for. And, uh, you know, we just made the plunge, okay, let's do this ourselves. Rachel's pretty awesome with that stuff. She agreed to take it on, and she did, and it's almost done. And, um, and, and even though it's not 100%, we now can do what we want with it and make changes, which is what we should have had all along. Amen. So check it out. Uh, you can have e easy access. To, uh, you can watch live right from our website. Uh, a lot of other things that are just really nice. Amen. Check it out. Um, and uh, can we just have a round of applause for John Schein getting his taxes done this year? Uh, <laughs> I, I heard you talking to Rachel earlier. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, um, I think that's all the announcements I have. I don't think anything. What's that? On time. On time. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have clarified, you know. Amen. Amen. I I, uh, I have no missionary letters tonight, no singing special, so we're going to get right into the message. Um, I want to tell you that it's not going to be a long one because I don't think it is, but I've said that before and I was still in the 30-minute range. So, amen. Um, guy I was working with today asked me, he's like, so how long are your messages? And uh, I was like, 30 minutes is my goal, but it's like always 35. I said there's been a, a couple 40 and 40 pluses in the past couple of years. Uh, seldom is it like 20, 25, but I'm trying for 30, amen, or less. Romans chapter 5 and Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Romans chapter 5 and Ecclesiastes chapter 1. You think that's bad? Try being a pastor at another church, and the, it, this, like this happened to me. I was, uh, was in Sunday school when we were in Ohio. And he turned to something that's in the Old Testament, like one of those minor prophets. And I was like, oh, oh I passed it three times. Oh, man, they're going to be looking at me, you know. <clears throat> it's a little more nerve-wracking. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And this is where we left off last week, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Boy, it's real easy to say, glory in tribulations, and, and work of patience, and experience, and hope, and, but boy, another thing to live in. Woo! Amen. Brother Tony, I'm glad you made it tonight. Miss Aaron got a migraine, and she's in bed with something. Amen. Yeah, good move. Don't even, don't even... <laughs> Don't even knock on the door. Amen. Would you pray? Get the message going, brother. Amen. Amen. If you're thankful we have air conditioning today, you can thank Brother John Shine. He's the one that got it up and running the other day for us. Amen. Verse 3, it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. He's saying not only so, as in uh, not only are we justified by faith. That's what the not only so means. The not only so means, and not only so do we have peace through Christ, and not only do we have access to the throne room, but also, in addition to all of those things, we also glory in tribulations also. I can imagine that this would, um, uh, th- this would not be a good pep rally or a pep talk to the youth group. Be glory and tribulations also, and they're like, "Oh, salvation is not sounding good now, right?" Uh, um, uh, yeah, we're going to have hot dogs. We're going to go bowling, and we're going to do this. And there's also going to be pain and sorrow in your life. Right, uh, so I'm on, you know, looking for a job. It's like, uh, um, yeah, we we offer three weeks vacation, four weeks vacation, uh, thirteen paid holidays, uh, unlimited sick time. Um, you have uh, dental and, and vision and in a uh, uh, short commute to work, and we'll pay for gas and we'll give you a truck to drive. And it'll be great, and also pain and suffering. That sounds awful. It sounds awful. But that's really, like, the truth of it. We, we don't like that word tribulation at all. Uh, but the truth of the matter is tribulation will grow you. It will grow me. No matter what the field is that you're dealing with. You have this, I don't know if it's the right term for this, but the, 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 the flight or fight mentality. You can grow from your tribulation, or you can just become bitter over it, right? Being a parent will, like, ruin somebody, amen, or grow you if you allow it to. Uh, When I learned to shingle for the first time, I I think I've said this before. I won't dwell on it, but uh, me and my dad, my other brother, we built a wraparound porch with a roof around the house, and we never done that before. We just asked questions, and we did it, and amen. It took us forever. We did a lot of things wrong. We used, we used uh, yarn, Brother Zollers, yarn and flour for our chalk line. <laughs> My dad was also a penny pincher. Love you, Dad. Amen. But um, so we framed it. It's sheeted. Now, this was, I just graduated high school, so this is the summertime. I don't have a job yet. I'm waiting until we get this, this roof done. I'm going to go get a job. I ended up working on a farm. But I'm working for dad basically every day, and um, he goes to work. And I, I called him up. I'm like, hey, dad, I, I, you went to work. I, talk, I don't know what to do today. We, we're done with all the wood. He's like, yeah, we got to put the sh- shingles on. I was like, I don't know how to do shingles. He's like, son, there's directions on the back. You can figure it out. He goes, I don't know how to do it, and you don't know how to do it, but I'm going to read the directions just like you do. I was like, okay. So I read the directions. And I shingled the roof, or got started anyways. And, and, but without my dad pushing me, because there's some stress on there. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> it will leak if we don't do it right. 
But if you read the instructions, it's actually not that big a deal. Like, it's a lot of things in life. But if we don't ever push ourselves in this tribulation spot, and 18-year-old's like, I don't know how to do it. You'll, 20 years, you'll never know how to do nothing because somebody else always had to do it. Amen. I highlighted this line here. How can you ever learn to fix a problem if you never have to fix one? So here in the text, Paul, he's showing, he's showing um, um, great maturity, but great wisdom as well. We say that we want to grow in the Lord, but we only want sunshine and rainbows. It's just the truth. We don't want anything bad. We don't. Um, uh, to grow and mature in the Lord is not just, a, I'll say, a, a happy, fun time now experience all the time. Um, although it's great to be a Christian, there is sorrow in wisdom. Turn to Ecclesiastes 1.16. You're probably already there. Ecclesiastes 1.16. There is sorrow in wisdom. Look at this. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have uh, been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know and to know madness and folly i perceive that this also is vexation of spirit and you say wait what's he talking about is, is knowledge and wisdom vexation of spirit yes and he clarifies it in the next verse he says for in much wisdom is much grief and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow it sure is nice to just not know anything when we're kids and like the world is a much better place Amen. It is just, you have no worries. Everybody loves everybody. You know, there's no threat of anything. Um, when, um, you know, the, the ha having a burden of knowledge that you didn't know before. I want to say validity of it, but the, 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 the weight of it. When a U.S. president comes into the presidency, it's not, you know, he's going to get inundated in the next week or two, right, with the realities of terrorist chatter nonstop. The realities of, um, okay, here's a natural disaster that just took place. How much aid are we going to take from here and put over here? And how, when are you going to stop it? Hey, th there, there's a pending war coming, or there's a war here. How many troops of our children are we going to send over to their fight? we got to do something, but how many are we, we going to send? Then how many are we going to bring home? These weighty things that we don't have to think about, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. You, you see these pictures of presidents before or when they first get in the office and then like four years later? It's like insane. You know, it's, it's insane. Uh, true story. Rachel, how long was it before I had, where is she? How long was it before I had a gray hair? being a pastor it was like like six months or something yeah I was like oh <laughs> yeah oh amen amen if Russia I wrote down here if Russia decides to nuke us are we going to nuke back or if not what's our strategy going to be we don't have to think about those things when you when you become a parent all of a sudden like you know like don't drop the baby right the baby don't have to worry about that but we do um, I remember, like, you want to take the baby in the shower, and we've done that before. But, like, whoa, <laughs> that's like WD-40 all over. Like, that's really dangerous, really dangerous. The baby don't worry, but you're worried about that. You know, you don't do that too long and too often because it's, like, really, really not smart. Amen. Um, you become a father. you got to provide for your baby and your wife and your children and, and the, the mortgage. And all of a sudden, it's not just about going out on the town it's not just about, oh, living my best life now. It's all about, I got responsibility. I will never forget, um, I will never forget uh, when Rachel told me she was pregnant the first time. And um, it was like a wave of responsibility was coming over me. And it was like, what is that? I don't like it. I don't like it. I used to be the guy that would walk on the barn walls and the roofs, and I was, I was a high guy. I'd grab that next truss. I'd swing over. I didn't care. But I literally went up with my nail bags thinking, I can't fall today. 
I told everybody this. I'm repeating myself. Amen. But growing isn't easy. Growing isn't easy. Uh, learn the guitar. Learn the skateboard. <laughs> it ain't easy. Amen. As a pastor, people will see me up here getting support, compliments. That is all true. I'm thankful for that. It's a blessing. But what is not seen is praying with families that are struggling with divorce or lo lo lost loved ones, issues in their lives. Keeping constantly potential threats away from the church within and without that people will never see. It's just, it's just stuff that happens all the time. Wicked agendas uh, 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 that, that people will have and, 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 and cause so many issues in people's families, whether they're in the church or, or not. Just all these awful things that are being dealt with all the time. As a pastor, being responsible for the finances of the church and how they're spent <laughs> and having to answer for them. That's a way to your matter. Uh, that's a way to your matter. I'm scared to check how many gray hairs they have nowadays. Amen. But as a Christian who's growing in the Lord, we should be seeing a whole new world in a whole new light. It should be, it should be, a, we become a new creature. All of a sudden, we understand the, 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 the end game of sin. We understand what it does. Um, have a mindset of, hey, we have loved ones that are dying and going to hell. That ought to sober you up. There's some sobering to be done when you become a Christian. It's just reality. As a new Christian, you're going to look around and you just see rebellion everywhere you look. It's like, wow. Um, um, Hollywood. I mean, we don't even have to look very far. Politics. Looking around and seeing that backsliding is just a way of life for God's people. And people revel in it. And it's disturbing when the Christian doesn't even recognize the evil in the world. But even more disturbing than that, when the Christian recognizes the evil and the sin and the rebellion and all these awful things going around, and they still put their head in the sand. It's even more disturbing. You have to turn there, but Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You can't tell a fool nothing. They won't listen to you. They don't want to hear it. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. You're probably already there. What I'm saying is there's grief and wisdom and growing is weariness of the flesh. You say, Pastor, you're not very wise. I say, I know. But give me 20 years of being a pastor. Then I'll have my head of gray hair. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Please ask you chapter 12, verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is weariness of the flesh. Boy, that's so important to know. Look at verse 13. And let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. But it's not just wisdom that comes with maturing in the Lord, as Paul's pointing to here it's patience it's experience it's hope and here's one that that is so lost on a weak christian is confidence man when things get bad it is so nice to just say well i'm a born again believer uh, it's in god's hands and things might get bad but it's in god's hands so amen <laughs> Amen. Look at look at back to our text, Romans 5, 3. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Paul knew exactly what he was talking about when he's talking about tribulation. He saw tribulation. None of us have ever seen tribulation. Not like Paul. Not like Paul. It was Paul that, the, the, probably the, I mean, you want to talk about an encouraging ver verse from Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That don't mean much 
it's cute, but it don't mean much when a five-year-old quotes it. No offense to Ava or Adeline, right? I mean, it's a blessing and it's cute. That's awesome. But somebody that has been whipped and stoned and shipwrecked and beaten over and over and in prison, stand and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's some depth to that, buddy. Amen. Amen. The modern day Christian today thinks that tribulation is being offended by another church member or the pastor or not having a nice car or being scared to be rejected when passing out a track. Amen. I listened to a testimony yesterday or today, yesterday in bed. I was listening to stories of martyrs, and this was particularly Nigeria. And he said that these hostiles came in, raiding the town, causing all kinds of whatever. And uh, they were, they were um, in this little village, there was a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians in Nigeria. And, uh, and I don't know what brand they were, but it doesn't matter. They love the Lord. And there was these hostiles coming in and took an old man and they said, denounce this Jesus you love or get your right hand chopped off. The guy's right hand chopped off. And they said, denounce him or we'll cut off your elbow or to the elbow. Then they took him down to the elbow. And his son was giving this tearful uh, 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 testimony. He was so proud of his dad. Whew, you want to talk about some encouragement? I bet the disciples were encouraged looking at Paul, what he went through, saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Here's this old man in Nigeria absolutely suffering. That's going to ruin the rest of his life. He can't, like, make money. He can't do nothing. Like, he's done, pretty much. But the encouragement that the people and the Christians rallied around him in the same town, the same hostile some years later, this would have been seven years ago from today, um, took a bunch of them and... Uh, I think this was right when ISIS was announcing themselves. It might have been ISIS. But they lined up all these men, and they said, uh, denounce your God. And they said, no. They cut their heads off in front of everybody. And this woman was given a testimony that her husband was one of those men, and she saw it happen. She was so thankful that her husband didn't denounce Christ. Yeah. Tribulation. So, in our mind's eye, what's the last thing that we complained about in our Christian life? Shame on us. It's pathetic. We, we are pathetic. I realized something as I was pondering this message. and uh, Turn to 1 Peter 3.12. We'll close with this. We'll, I want to read a portion of scripture, and we will close the message with that. And as we get to that... Um, I realized something I was pondering for the message last few days. <clears throat> Nero, we know, began to burn Christians in 64 A.D. When I say burn Christians, we know that he blamed the specific sect of the Jews, which was Christians. He called them the sect of the Jews. It was, it was Christians, right? He, he hated them and and, and he blamed them for the burning in Rome, which was probably just a convenient thing for him to do, right? And um, in his anger, he, he would, and we know this, he would tar Christians and then hang their bodies up in his garden and walkway to the garden and light them on fire. That's tribulation. I've I read it before where Nero would, would put animal skins and wrap them and tie them on people and then throw them in the dungeon with these starving dogs and just let them ravish them. Tribulation, torture, awful, awful, awful. Then I got to thinking, that was a long time ago. I'm like, wait, what, when was this? 64 AD. 64 AD. Our scripture wasn't canonized until like 95, 96 AD. Like, they were... They were like gifts of the Spirit fully at that time. They, wait, there was original disciples at that time. Wait. 
Paul and Peter were there at that time. Real tribulation. Our secular history tells us that uh, Peter was hung upside down from Nero right during that time. That fire in Rome sparked all that hatred for the Christians, and then he wound up finally getting Paul and Peter. He had Paul beheaded because he was a Roman citizen. I mean, he's only beheaded because he's a Roman citizen. So it means something when Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What a blessing it would be for all of eternity to be a martyr to, to, to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I gave my life. Amen. Amen. All of a sudden, the word of God just got a whole lot easier to study, didn't it? All of a sudden, when, when, when we got some extra time tomorrow, it's not going to be so hard to get our Bibles out and say, Lord, thank you for my beautiful home and the air condition that I have and the job that I have and the car you gave us and the family you gave me. Lord, thank you for these blessings. You've been so good to me. We're not promised sunshine and roses. We could absolutely very well experience another Holocaust type situation. That, that could, could absolutely happen in our country and in our world. And I, I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, if that were to happen, the Christians would be the new Jews. I believe that. And all of a sudden, we'd be longing to read God's word. All of a sudden, we'd be craving the fellowship of going to church. We'd be craving the fellowship of the believer and thanking God for our beautiful chairs and our, and our church and amen and everything that we have. We will never learn to glory in tribulation if we can't learn to glory in our inconveniences. I speak because I are one. I speak because I are one. Look at 1 Peter 3.12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is... He that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good. But and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. Oh, man. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, that they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. We can't learn to glory in passing out a track. We will never learn to glory when we're put in prison for being a Christian. I want to serve God with all my life. Everything that I have left, I want to serve the Lord. And I want to surround myself with like-minded Christians. I thank God for Hope Baptist Church. But I don't want to be a partial Christian, a sometimes Christian. I want to be fully. I want to be holy. I want to be all in. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want to take that stand and, and, and mean it. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for... The study of your word. Help us, Lord, to, to take this Christianity serious that you've given us, Lord. Help us to quit being...